What's up, Internet Land? Zachamus Prime, aka Zachamus Prime, here with another Transformers third party review. This is a Transformers Legend review. I'm super excited for this because you know how I love my Transformers Legends, my third party Legends specifically, and this is one that I've been looking forward to a while. You already know what it is because thumbnails and titles and bullshit, and whatnot. I am going to take a moment to thank Agabus. Agabus shipped this, um, not directly to me, they shipped it to a buddy of mine who. Then gave it to me for a Christmas gift. Thank you, bro. You're awesome. <clears throat> Agabus is freaking awesome. So I got to tell you just a really quick story. My birthday was back in November, and uh, I got, you know, this gift from the same guy. Um, and he couldn't find it on Agabus' site. And so he got one from some Chinesium corporation overseas, and it took like a month and a half to ship it. And it was so long, and it came, my birthday is early in November, and it came, like, like at the very tail end of November, and it was it was just hilarious. Uh, yeah, great figure, and I was really grateful for it, but he uh, ordered this off of, off of Agabus, and it was on his doorstep just a couple days later. Like, super fast shipping, super easy to work with. This is my number one favorite place on the internet to shop for stuff, so... Keep that in mind, Agabus. Anyhow, so the figure that we're reviewing is going to be the New Age Lucifer. And, um, I don't know. Side note, Lucifer doesn't actually refer to Satan. A lot of uh, Christians think that it does, but it's actually, it's actually, uh, has been, uh, anyhow. <clears throat> Uh, that that's neither here nor there. You didn't come here to listen to theology and Greek translations and whatnot. You came here to look at freaking toys. These are not toys for kids under thirteen, though. By the way, if you are under the age of thirteen, turn it off right now. It's your bedtime. Jeez. But this is the um, this is the new age Lucifer. It is flipping amazing. I absolutely love this figure. I was talking to a buddy of mine about this just earlier today. And I was telling him, I was like, dude, if they made this figure in just a full masterpiece scale, this size, nobody would be upset. And uh, if they did make it this size, of course, they could do a lot of things to make the engineering even better. So, like, literally no one would be upset. It would... It would be an all-around completely enjoyable figure. Just look at that. The red on it pops really well. The blue is just a nice shade. It's interesting because some of this red is just red plastic, like these intakes here. That's just red plastic. But like, all of this on the waist area, that's all painted. And of course, this is paint details on the chest. Not entirely certain how that works because I know they're making a ghost Starscream version that has got these molded in red plastic. So, I don't know. Mold changes, I guess. But, just, just a really well-made figure. Um, got a couple things that that kind of, that kind of, you know, I, I got to keep my eye out for. Um, but it's, it's basically perfect. I love I love how clean the back cleans up. Um, you know the the make toys, the make toys um, uh, howling meteor or whatever they call it. That doesn't clean up this well. The Dakar one, uh, as I recalled, oh, shoot, I haven't transformed my Dakar one into into bot mode in so long. I don't remember exactly how well it cleans up. Little little thick chest to back but you know what i it doesn't it's it's so minor compared to so many other transformers that it's like hard to even notice that enough to call it a nitpick it's just it's fantastic um god i just i love it great face sculpt on here little i mean he doesn't really have you know like a smirk like a starscream smirk but it kind of is suggestive of one His, uh, his eyes, by the way, they cheated. It is a separate piece. 
that goes all the way through so they just paint the end of it but you know what it looks good enough that that's, there's no problem there it's, it's hard to show this up on video but the metallic red on the eyes just really really makes them pop I think that's I mean in, as far as eyes go I think metallic paint really is the way to go the um, the legs are super clean like of course you can see the 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 fin details inside the leg but they are super super clean everything closes up properly when it's in robot mode nothing's hanging out there's nothing sticking out there's nothing you know just just beautiful but let's look at his accessories real quick of course he comes with this two no rays um sometimes it's hard to think of them as, as accessories because they are basically a feature of the character but he does come with these two no rays they are molded very very well looking great he comes with My uh, my desk is not quite level. Something that I learned when I started making resin art. Let's put him aside for a second. He comes with um, two sets of what's basically becoming the New Age Standards, which is a set of open palm hands. These are the same sculpt as the ones that came with um, Megatron, the ones that came with Ironhide and Ratchet, and a set of pointy hands. well molded just molded in color but they look nice enough swapping them out is super easy you just grab his fist pull it off simple peg put the other one back on and now he can John Cena you or something He also comes with a Megatron gun accessory. Beep. Molded in uh, that kind of off-white gray color, painted in silver and black. Looks good. Just slips right into his hand. No issues, no worries. Looks great. nicely proportioned no uh, stock on the bottom but to be perfectly honest an additional piece like that would be super frustrating to try and you know make it all work out first time I saw this I was like man I kind of wish that they had painted it in gray to uh, match up with uh, the Megatron but then I realized that this Megatron I have is is only uh there's only one version. There's a version that's painted in that same silver metallic, so. Maybe someday I'll have to get that. I don't know. I've got so many other figures that I need to get ahead of that, including like another six of these guys. Uh, maybe seven, I don't know. Other accessories he comes with is a couple of uh, missiles for his alt mode. I'll show that when I get him into his alt mode. And he also comes in the bottom of his tray, comes with a display stand, which I will show you in depth, and a series of effect accessories, which I am also going to show you. So first and foremost, about this display stand here, it's molded in clear plastic and then painted in this purpley kind of shimmery metallic. This, I had thought that there was just going to be like six. Six and then you stick them all together and it turns into, it makes it a space bridge, you know. But as I look at that angle... That is definitely uh, less than a 60 degree angle, which is what you would need to have six of them make a full circle. 
And as I look at it, that's that's less than a 45 degree angle, which is what you would need to have eight of them come together. I'm thinking that that might be like a 35 degree angle. I don't have I don't have a, a measuring tool for that on me. But um, I'm thinking that's a big enough angle that they might be they might be thinking about coming out with 10 of these guys in total with this section here. And I was thinking, well, let me see. You've got Starscream, Thundercracker, uh, Skywarp. You've got the Coneheads. You've got Ghost Starscream. You've got Sunstorm. Maybe Acid Storm. And I'm not sure who would be number 10. Red Wing, maybe? I don't know. So, at least 9 I can think of off the top of my head, plus another 10th one. Maybe 10 is what you need to make this all go together. But if this is really made up of 10, like with the diameter on that, it would just be effing huge. Which would kind of throw out the idea of having a shelf full of tiny Legends class figures. So... I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how many I'm going to get. But I do want to get more than just Starscream. I certainly want to get, you know, the basic three. But I'm also thinking heavily about getting uh, the Coneheads as well. And Sunstorm has always been a favorite of mine. And Ghost Starscream is going to come with a coronation set for regular Starscream. Just, ah, uh, marketing is getting me. So these little accessories here, these are tabs that are going to fit this all together. You can see that there's a slot here and a slot here. And you'll just take these, plug them into that, and plug them into that. And then when you, you know, acquire more of these base parts, you'll be able to tab them in together and go all the way around full circle, etc., etc. So that's what these are for. Now I can stick them back. If I can get them back in here. Yeah, anyhow, I'll deal with it later. But you can stick this down like that, and you can put this base up. Now this base doesn't feel as nice as say like a like a Figma stand or um, something of that ilk, but it's fairly nice. It's got your standard sort of um, three millimeter peg here. It'll fit into this little tab on the back. Plugs right in like that. Have Starscream flying around. And that's cool. It doesn't seem to hold it very well. Maybe if you pinch this together. This is, of course, not screwed or anything together. Um, but if you squeeze it hard enough, it, it holds tighter. It does also have an adapter for a 5mm uh, peg. So if you wanted to, you could plug this guy in onto the same stand. And it comes with a figure adapter of the claw sort, even with the little geared teeth. That's kind of cool. So if you've got a figure that doesn't have um, some sort of an action base stand on it, um, I guess perfect example would be this uh, Megatron right here. Doesn't have an action stand adapter. You can just take this, clamp it around here, pretend you don't see it, and then he can just go on here just unpeg this, peg this one back on, and then Megatron can be flying. If that's what your heart desires. In um, in conjunction with that display base, you can have these effect parts here. You can just plug them in. Woo. 
There's multiple pieces here. Oh, but they don't come apart, I guess. It's weird. Don't know why that's like that, but I didn't sign it, so. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. That's. <laughs> this part around here is pokey. Ow, ow, ouch. Ow. All right, there he is with thrusters on his feet. And you can stick these things. I swear to God, one of these came with Megatron. And when I reviewed that, I thought it might have been like maybe like the laser sword effect part, but he didn't come with a laser sword, so who knows? So now he can be like thrusting around. And shooting John Woo style. Pew, pew. I think they look good. I think they look good. I don't know if this is going to be my uh, display choice for it. Because, I mean, you've got... This guy takes up, you know, this much, this much shelf space. Whereas this takes up, you know, easily two or almost three times the shelf space. So... I don't know if that's necessarily how I'm going to uh, choose to display it long term, but certainly short term I will. But alright, let's take these off. We'll get into articulation. So, let's start actually on the back here. So his wings, uh, this is this is one of the minor quibbles that I, that I mentioned before. Um, the Iron Factory guy has got wings that are on ball joints, so they'll rotate around a bit. They'll go up and down a bit, and they'll go back and forth. And I really enjoy posing him with his wings kind of bent back like that. I think that looks good. It's a nice dynamic look for Starscream, personally. And this one doesn't allow for anything like that, but I'll allow it because, I mean, he's not technically shown like that a lot. And certainly not in the G1 cartoon, so... And that's what is this is this that's what this is supposed to be based off of primarily, but that's on like a double hinge here, and it'll go up and down. You can pull it out <clears throat> quite a bit if you want to. His head is on a ball joint, but it doesn't it doesn't do much except for work as a as a glorified pivot. So like his head really doesn't go up and down at all. It doesn't really go side to side at all, but it will rotate. It will rotate quite nicely all the way around. So his shoulders are on a ball joint. This is another thing that I've got some minor issue with, which is this ball joint is fairly tight, and it will hold its position extremely well, no matter what position it's in. But it's also tighter than the transformation joint it's connected to. So you just got to be careful of that when you're moving it around, you know? Other than that, there's no problem whatsoever. He's got a ball joint here at the elbow, which is for transformation, <laughs> like that. But it, you know, in the robot mode, it 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 plays as a swivel, as a, as a bicep swivel. He's got an elbow joint with 90 degrees of bend. Wrist will swivel about nicely on its little peg. He's got a waist joint here. It doesn't go all the way around because of the way the waist is designed, but he's got certainly more, uh, certainly as much as you'd need for, you know, typical uh, posing and whatnot. He's got little skirt armors here that allow for his leg to move forward that much. He does have a, a, an ab crunch in the crotch area, and so if you run that, technically you can move his leg up that much. So that's something right there. Leg will go back basically all the way until it whacks his, uh, his wings. Legs are on a ball joint, so they, got, they have a full Van Dam. They've got a pivot right here, a thigh swivel. Knee bends for about 90 degrees right there. The toe, is, the toe and the heel, by the way, are both die cast. This is my first uh, Legend Scale figure with die cast on it, so... That's kind of cool. 
the toe bends uh, mostly for transformation, does not go down, it goes up as much as you'd want it to go, it will in fact fold all the way up. And then it's got uh, ankle tiltage, this much tilt on that one due to this little peg here that helps keep the uh, legs together in vehicle mode. It's got all of the tiltage on the other one, so no peg on that side. And that's it for transformation. It is just, it's an expressive figure, it's enjoyable to look at, it's really nice, but honestly I think one of my favorite things about it is its transformation, which is an excellent segue. <laughs> To get this figure transformed up, I'm going to start on the, the legs. So you're going to open up this panel here, and you're going to fold out this little fin and this little fin. And you're going to fold out this one right here, and this right here. And then what you want to do is you kind of want to stick your thumb right here where this kind of lump sticks out. On his leg and push that in and swing this this module all the way around and then let's move this like this so you can see this little tiny tab right here and there's a corresponding slot on the inside of that fin that's going to plug in right there and that's that you're going to take this you're going to close it back down, you're going to fold that foot up all the way, and that is one leg all done. So let's do the same with the other leg, open this up, fold this stuff out, fold that stuff out, push this panel in, bring it around, and that one popped out, why, because my camera's on. Plug that into there, fold up this foot, close this panel, peg them both together, and there is the back of the jet. Looking like a jet. So now what we want to do is we want to take these red panels here, open those up. We're going to disconnect this from here and kind of bring it around. You want to pull up on his chest. This is super impressive, by the way. This chest just amuses me to no end. I love it. So you want to pull up this chest like this so that it's sticking out like that. And then you want to unfold this here. And then unfold the nose cone sections here. And these will tab together making your complete nose cone and then you want to take the chest sections and you want to fold them down and around let's see this from the other side you want to fold them down and around <laughs> i've never seen the star scream transformation quite like that i just love it now you want to take this and you want to rotate it right here like that. And then you want to fold this. All right, let's get this panel out of the way real quick. Fold that open. Now you want to fold this all the way back like this and rotate. See, first we rotated at this joint here. Now we're going to rotate at this joint here all the way again. And that is that in the vehicle mode. There's a little bit of visible head syndrome, but eh, not much. Certainly not as bad as, you know, some other figures, so we can certainly easily forgive this. For the arms, what you want to do is you want to open up this panel here on the forearm, and then you want to rotate this in such a way, so here's the front of the arm here, right? You're actually going to take and bend it like so, and then bend this around so that what's basically the back of the arm folds in against the forearm and then this little peg here is going to plug into that little slot there and then you're going to take this and rotate this on this transformation joint like so Ta-da! again with the other side crack this open here bend it around plug that peg into that slot, fold this up, 
There's a peg on one hit arm and a slot on the other. You're just going to get those to fit together like they were meant to. Then you'll just take the section here, plug the wings into there. Like that. Plug these into there like that. Plug these. You'll see you've got you've got this relief slot right here and then below that you have the actual transformation slot if everything is plugged in and flush this panel will just tab right into that like so beautiful and then you just want to take these intakes and flip them up a little bit and there he is in his vehicle mode he is just gorgeous very very sleek i mean this is actually sleeker than the make toys ones not by a whole lot but maybe by a little bit you don't have you don't have the like starscream chest syndrome on the bottom that's plagued a lot of figures especially since classics came out and it just it works really well you've got landing gear right here on the front and right here let me use a let me just no i'll just use my fingers why not there we go there's one and there's two And so there's his landing gear. He sits on him just fine. He even still has access to this peg down here. So I'm just going to grab his adapter. And we'll plug in right here to hold him in jet mode. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot. Let's take his nail rays and plug them into the wings. So, yeah, looking sharp. I love this. I think it's great. Now, of course, you know, I'm a little bit of a uh, of a Jet fan. So, you know, I always enjoy a nice, sleek-looking uh, uh, Jet mode. And this is, you know, certainly sleeker-looking than something like that. You know, this guy's got a little bit of visible head syndrome and whatnot. But this guy has got a little bit of visible everything syndrome. But anyhow, you can also take these off, and instead of those, you can put on these little missile launchers here to look more like the little missile launchers that came with uh, Starscream, the G1 toy. You can, if you really want, plug them into what used to be his shoulders, and this is a completely non-standard uh, mounting point but you know whatever it's just a toy so and you can actually plug in all four of these all at the same time if you really want to or you can take and plug in megatron as if megatron didn't have the capability to fly around with his own damn self Well, okay, maybe that's not meant to be there. There's got to be some way for him to, to be intended to fit in here. I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out sometime. These will, once again, it's the same, it's the same, ow, ow. Jeez, these things hurt. Ugh. So that when you whoosh him around in his jet mode, he can have afterburners. So, again, that's something. All in all, though, this this figure is fantastic. I absolutely love it. It is just, it's it's got great engineering. It's got great aesthetics. 
It's got great posability. Like this, I know I said this about the New Age Insecticons, and I know, I don't know if I said this about the Megatron, but like, like this just speaks everything that I want to hear about, about Legends class third parties. Like this is so nice. Stuff like this, stuff like this makes me convinced to just, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't, I haven't bought a, uh, a Legends class Hasbro figure in a couple years now, just because I've been so happy with the way my collection is going right now. And stuff like this is definitely the reason why. But anyhow, that's my review of the New Age Lucifer. Go hit up agabus.com. Go there and check this all out. Like, this is definitely the site to go online. I love it. It's a great site. It's a great figure. You guys are fantastic. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Everybody stay awesome and be good to each other. See ya. Bye.